tours. Some of you may know that um, in 1984, I had moved to Washington, D.C. from California and Minnesota and North Carolina and Puerto Rico and so many places. Huh? I had moved to Washington, D.C. because I had decided that it was time to do something about nuclear weapons. I remember as a child in uh, Palos Verdes, where I grew up, uh, beginning in kindergarten, I was taught to dive under my desk when the bell rang and duck and cover. And I asked the teacher why. And she said, so you don't get cut by glass if a bomb drops. <laughs> That's kind of scary in itself, but I had seen Life magazine cover. Fortunately, in those days, the media had a little bit of freedom to tell you what was going on. And they had a cover showing Hiroshima after the bomb. And they had pictures inside showing dead and dying people and, and mothers covered with soot holding or burns holding their nursing child. And so it didn't make any sense to me, you know, that, it, that I could protect myself from a bomb. Mm -hmm. So that was a, a seed planted. And I remember when my daughter was born, sitting next to her crib and, and crying, thinking about what could happen because the Cold War was going on and it was all you could hear about was be afraid of the Russians and be afraid of communism. Mm -hmm. And be afraid, be afraid. And we're still getting it. It's still going on. And it's crazy. It's nuts. It's nuts. So I was working in Minnesota, um, driving home from work one day. And I saw a banner over the freeway that had been slung from one of the bridges by Women Against Military Madness. Have any of you heard of them? They're, they're in Minneapolis. And uh, they're like Mothers for Peace. They're a local group that does wonderful things. And it was during the uh, nuclear freeze. It was shortly after the um, gathering of a million people in, in New York City for the nuclear freeze. And I was struck by, yes, this is what I want to be working on. I don't want to be working for this guy over here. I want to do something about this. And then I saw that there was a rally in the stadium where Senator Durenberger was going to speak about nuclear weapons. So I went to the rally, and there were about 80 very dedicated people who were there in a stadium that was big enough for a ball game. And I thought, whoa, <laughs> this is not the place to be doing it, doing much accomplishing much on this. So I decided it was time to go to Washington, D.C. and start working there because uh, that was where the decision was made about issues as important as nuclear weapons, which I did. And um, I was working for the National Wildlife Federation. My daughter had graduated from high school and was working, living with me. And um, the National Wildlife Federation shareholders in 1983, or excuse me, 84, uh, passed a resolution calling on President Reagan to abolish nuclear weapons. That was great. And then I was walking through Lafayette Park, which is north of the White House one night, on my way down 16th Street, where the National Wildlife Federation is, to have dinner with a friend. And I saw these enormous signs. One of them was a sign that said, Mr. President, why don't you come out with the forced homeless? And there was a homeless woman, seemingly, lying on the sidewalk wearing a ski suit against the cold on a, on a March night. And on the other side, of, and I was writing a play about homeless people and trying to flesh out the characters in the play. And, and on the other side of her was a humongous sign that was a, a mushroom cloud with the words, Revelation, this need not be our end. And it was like everything just kind of fell into place for me right then. And I spoke to the woman, her name was Concepcion Picciotto. I asked her how long she had been there, and she said, three years, day and night. I said, do you do this by yourself? And she said, no, I have a friend. He's a philosopher. His name is Thomas. 
So I decided I needed to come back and meet this philosopher, if nothing else, to flesh out the character in my play. Uh, and I came back the next day and sat down and we started to talk and three weeks later I joined the vigil. I gave everything I owned to my daughter and I joined the vigil and three weeks after that he and I were married and I'm still married to him. He died ten years ago but he's the love of my life. And he was the person who founded the vigil in front of the White House, June 3rd, 1981. So we were under siege from the regulation writers and the police. And we struggled against that. That took us a while. We went to prison for three months in 1988, charged with camping. Um, in 1990, though, and during, in 1986, there was an astrogeophysicist from New Mexico by the name of Dr. Charles Hyder who came and fasted for a really long time. He weighed 310 pounds when he began, and he weighed 140 pounds when he stopped. And during that fast, we created what is now this petition and circulated it in front of the White House and collected signatures. And every year I would go up on Capitol Hill and visit every single one of the legislators and ask them to introduce a bill. And didn't get anywhere, no response, no answer, nothing. So a fellow came to DC from Arizona, who had been part of the Impeach Governor Meekum campaign because he wouldn't have the Martin Luther King holiday, which was a successful campaign. And so Joe Vigarito was his name. He's no longer with us, I'm sorry to say. Great fellow. And he said, you know, circulating a petition that doesn't have any clout really is just, other than getting people to think about the idea, it's kind of a waste of time. You need to have a voter initiative where you, when you collect a signature, you're working towards getting, getting it to the voters. So that's what we did. We started in 1990, and then the first Gulf War happened, and so we had to cancel that particular campaign because we were beating on drums day and night, um, 40 days and 40 nights, to try to stop the war. Um, but then after that was over, we again launched the, the initiative, and in 1993, we had a special election because the city council chair had committed suicide, which was a horrible thing, but it was really fortunate for us because none of the people that were usually gearing up to deal with elections and looking at stuff and giving you their opinions and telling lies about it, you know, nobody knew about it. We put up some signs around town that simply said, vote yes on initiative 37. And so people, when they went into the voting booth and came out again, they were saying, how could you vote against it? Because we were asking the mayor to, to write a letter to the congressperson saying, please introduce a bill. We were asking for a constitutional amendment in the, in the initiative because we wanted something we could negotiate with. Um, to abolish nuclear weapons with everybody else, and to promise the world that we would abolish nuclear weapons if everybody else did, and that we would earmark the money that was saved for human needs. And as a result of winning the election handily, 56% of the vote, um, Eleanor Holmes Norton, who was a second term congresswoman at the time, introduced the bill. She wouldn't do it. Uh, uh, constitutional amendment. She said it would make her laughing stop, but she was willing to introduce the bill. She has never promoted it. She has gotten proud of it. At first it was just something she did for the voters. But now she's proud of it, and particularly this year she's proud of it because, um, if you can roll it up there, here's a picture of Eleanor Holmes Norton, and this is Beatrice Finn of uh, International Coalition Against Nuclear Weapons, which won a Nobel Peace Prize, and Beatrice Finn was with Norton when she introduced it. And Vicki Elson and Tim and Wallace are with NuclearBan.us, which is coordinating a candidate's pledge and a whole campaign around supporting the UN Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, which you can read about in the literature that we've got over there. So. Um, after, that, after this initiative 
passed, of course, we were no longer considered crackpots and, and lunatics. And started, people started treating us with a little more respect, which was very nice. Um, so, let's see. Let me look at my notes here. So, what I want to do, actually, is I want to read this bill to you. Because this session, this session when it was introduced, it, it was substantially revised from what it had been. It, was, it has been changed over the years. For example, when it was first introduced, it was the Nuclear Weapons Abolition and Economic Conversion Act. And then it became obvious, it, you can't get rid of nuclear weapons unless you get rid of nuclear power plant plants, because the nuclear power plants are producing weapons grade uranium and plutonium all the time. And so even if we agree to get rid of the ones we have, and even if we figure out what to do with all those 50,000 plutonium and uranium pits that are stored in Amarillo, Texas, and God only knows where around the world, we have 15,000 weapons that are active weapons at this point, but that makes another 35,000 plutonium pits that could be put into uh, new, weapon system, new weapon systems. And in fact, what the Trump administration wants to do is to start producing new plutonium pits at Los Alamos and at the Savannah River site for their new so-called low-yield nuclear weapons, which means they'd be about the size of a Hiroshima bomb. We can't let this happen, particularly when we are actually making movement. I feel some hope, some real hope now, that we have this treaty in the UN. And I think that if we, if we make people aware of it and um, work at it, we can actually succeed. I, I would really like to see this happen before I die. I'm 72 years old and I'm in good health, and so I think I probably have another couple of decades to go if I'm lucky. And I pray, I pray that I get to see an end to nuclear weapons before I'm gone. Do you hear? <laughs> so here is the text of this session's bill, which uh, in other ways has been revised as well. But um, I'll just read it to you. The U.S. government shall provide leadership by signing and ratifying the U.N. Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons or any other international agreement that provides for the dismantlement and elimination of all nuclear weapons in every country under strict and effective international control and redirect the resources that are being used for nuclear weapons programs to use in converting all nuclear weapons industries and in retraining employees to shift to a constructive, ecologically beneficial peace economy, which includes strict control of all fissile materials and in addressing human and infrastructure needs, including development and deployment of sustainable, carbon-free, and nuclear-free energy sources, and health care, housing, education, agriculture, and environmental restoration, and actively promote policies to induce all other countries to join in these commitments, and it goes into effect when the President certifies to Congress that all countries possessing nuclear weapons have begun the elimination under a treaty or other device that is approved in number one. So take the money, the $1.7 trillion that are going to be spent on nuclear weapons development and modernization and instead use it for the Green New Deal. Why not? It means jobs for everybody. We're not saying shut down Lockheed or what are the, what are the defense industries around you? Any? Yeah, and there's a lot of industries yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 So if people who are working at jobs that they're kind of ashamed of are suddenly being paid to get retrained to do jobs that they're proud of, you think this isn't going to be good for people? And, and you think that it's not going to be profitable for the com companies? Why do they have to continue doing the same old nasty stuff? It doesn't make any sense. And for these guys in the back row here, you ought to be in the front row. Because you're the future. 
And we gotta, we gotta help you. We gotta help you to make this world a safer place. Oh, okay. All right. You're visiting from Japan. How wonderful. Can we ask questions? Yes. Can we ask questions? Um, can you say it loud enough to say yeah, it? Two things. Um, are there um, other, what is it, 22 other countries in the world that, that you're working on to try to get to sign the treaty? You know, the, you said it, it takes 50. 50 countries? It takes 50 countries yeah. to, so uh, for the treaty to go into effect. Right. So 50 there, countries to ratify. Are there other countries right now that people are working on to try to... Well, the people in their own countries are, right. are working on it. The right. Japanese uh -huh. have collected over 9 million signatures on the Habakusha appeal. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we're bringing our 8,000 plus signatures to present to the Habakusha in Hiroshima to add to the signatures that they so already is, have. So is it inter international signatures? Yes. Yeah. Oh, From all so over the many world. things you can do. They came to Ojai. Ojai is international city of peace, which we work and we got it, and we both can. And also, uh, no, they came, uh, Tim and uh, Vicky. They came to Ojai, and Ojai was, we worked, and Dr. Bob Dodge and people in the city worked and made the city nuclear free city. You can do that here with your city council and everybody say we want nuclear, nuclear free city. And the meaning of it would be that they would pressure uh, Diablo. No, that to grows faster and no nook, no nook, and no dealing because they had to give them more money. I'll go over that in a minute. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. one of the things that is going on is that uh, the U.S. Conference of Mayors on July 1st, uh, for years now, they've been passing a resolution at their annual meeting calling for abolition of nuclear weapons. This, this year, they're, they're saying, calling all, on all presidential candidates to make known their positions on nuclear weapons and to pledge U.S. global leadership in preventing nuclear war, returning to diplomacy, and negotiating the elimination of nuclear weapons. And it refers specifically to the U.N. Treaty on, on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. It, but they are also asking all of the U.S. cities to join Mayors for Peace, which is an international organization that was started by the mayors of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Mm -hmm. I'm working on my hometown mayor right now. I've written to him twice and gotten no response, and I'm going to go knock on his door next. Um, and I, if we can each and all of us go to our mayors and ask them to, be, to become a mayor for peace, that's one thing that you can do. Um, there's other things that you can do, too. Um, you, it, the petition here, I, there's two petitions over there. One of them is why, and this is to the Senate, asking that the senators um, ratify the uh, UN Treaty on the, I'll call it the Ban Treaty. Um, if, if the president signs it, ask them to ratify it and to do what they can to make sure that this happens, you know, pass some laws. Um, and at the bottom of this petition, you can, you can get this information on this website, which is prop1.org, P-R-O-P, number one.org, and my card, if you'll get my card, it's got the website, and it also has my email address if you have any, and phone number if you have any questions, which is et at prop1.org. And this page of the Prop1.org is, it starts out telling you about the campaign that's in the whole nuclear era. Please sign the online petition to representatives. Um, and there's a link, uh, how to fund the Green New Deal and get rid of NIMS 2. There's a copy of that there along with HR 2419 on the back. And uh, petition to U.S. representatives to circulate is the one that's up and down, and that goes to the House of Representatives asking for co-sponsorship of Ellen Holmes Norton's bill. 
Um, Jim McGovern of Worcester, Mass. signed on right away, but the main reason I'm on this trip and on this campaign is to try to get more co-sponsors for Norton's bill. It's always been introduced into the House um, Foreign Affairs and um, Armed Services Committees. This is the first session, and I think it's because of the revisions that have been made in it, uh, adding the UN Treaty and taking out some clauses that were unnecessary. Um, this is the first time that it's actually been uh, passed along to a subcommittee, a subcommittee on strategic forces. So I've been told by a legislator, that we, uh, staff member of a legislator that we visited this week, we've visited a whole bunch of them, uh, said that he recommended that we find out who the members of the strategic um, forces subcommittee of the Armed Services Committee, who the members are, and, and specifically try to find people who are their constituents to ask them to support and the bill and co-sponsor the bill and get it out of committee to the floor for a vote. So there can be some discussion on it. Because it only makes sense. It only makes sense. And if you read it carefully, I think you'll agree. Um, one of the things that, um, that has been copied and is ready for you to take with you is a four-page flyer, Good People Doing Great Things. And what that says is it, it tells you about the treaty and who's, who is supporting it. And it also has information about uh, what you can do as a will branch or as an organization or as individuals. And it says in the Senate, visit your senators and ask them to actively support the treaty and ask them to introduce into the Senate legislation similar to Eleanor Holmes Norton's Nuclear Weapons Abolition and Economic and Energy Conversion Act because it's never been introduced into the Senate. Um, and encourage everyone to sign the online version of the Wilf U.S. petition if that's how they like to do it, or to sign the paper petition, which you can print in here. And also there's a petition to senators and the online petition to senators. And on the petition to the senators, which is the wide one, if you are familiar with uh, social media and web and so forth, there's a QR code that you can point your camera at with your, I think just with your um, camera. Smartphone. And, and it'll take you automatically to the page where you can sign the petition right there. So if you're out and about, you can share it with other people. And uh, there's also a flyer about Women's International League for Peace and Freedom over there that you can print out and put your uh, organization's name on there to show that you agree with it. And it gives you a lot of, of this information that I'm sharing with you here. Um, hang on just a second. And then in the House, visit your representative to ask for co-sponsorship of Norton's bill. And again, the online and paper petitions. And then during the election year, which is now, if you get an opportunity to meet a candidate, either personally or in a public forum, it would be great if you would ask these questions. Will you support Eleanor Holmes Norton's Nuclear Weapons Abolition and Economic and Energy Conversion Act? This would provide the funding and direction of the Green New Deal. I mean, there's copies of this over there, and it's also in the um, Good People Doing Great Things flyer. If you become president, and I would love to ask Kamala Harris and <laughs> Tulsi Gabbard is the person that I personally am supporting because I think she makes a lot of sense. She's against regime change wars and against nuclear weapons and for all of the progressive things. Very impressive person. If you become president, will you sign the UN Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons? That's an important question yeah. to ask. And as a congressional leader, if it's your representative or your senator, will you sign the congressional pledge supporting this treaty? And that's uh, nuclearban.us. Um, 
campaign, and the link for that is on this flyer. So you can you can do all of those. You can ask your own questions too, but it would be great if you would ask these questions. Can I ask you another question? Yes. Can, have you sent that to everybody who's a candidate? Not yet. I'm waiting. Okay. I'm waiting for the people who are seeing them face to face. Yeah, I have I have written to Tulsi, and I'm waiting to hear back. I hope they do. So Ellen. Yes. I just wanted to interject. She's giving us so many things to do, and the Mothers for Peace will work it out. I'm passing out things as they're referred to, kind of. And then, uh, you know, our email alerts, I think everybody here is on the list. So what we'll do is we'll click on those things. Ellen, what did I call you, Ellen? And, <laughs> and we'll send them out to our alert list, like, one at a time. Yeah. I've, I've already done the one of asking the question of the, uh, presidential candidates, you know, what they do about the, the, the abolition. Uh, now there's, there's two things that I want to touch on briefly, and that is other legislation that is in Congress. One good piece of legislation that has been adopted in the House um, National Defense Authorization Act is uh, H.R. 2354 in the Senate 10, S. 1039, um, Prevention of Unconstitutional War with Iran Act, to limit the use of funds for kinetic military operations in or against Iran. So that's already in the House bill, but that doesn't mean it's going to stay there because the budget hasn't yet been been approved and finalized because the Senate has a different bill. So it's important to let your representatives and your senators know that you do not want war with Iran and you want them to do everything that they can to stop it because from number one, we don't need any more regime change wars, and number two, it's much too volatile, much, much too dangerous to do this at this time. Um, then there are a couple of bills that have been introduced by Ted Lieu and, and Ed Markey uh, having to do with specific uh, um, systems and the INF Treaty Compliance Act that was introduced by Tulsi Gabbard. Um, and there was in January, Ted Lieu and Ed Markey introduced uh, no first use without declaration of war by Congress. And then um, after that, uh, Senator Warren and uh, Representative Adam Smith introduced, it is the policy of the United States to not use nuclear weapons first. So they took out the, without the um, consent of Congress and said it's just our policy not. It hasn't passed. And I personally, when the, when the nuclear freeze movement was happening, I thought, yeah, that's a good thing, but it doesn't go far enough. And that's why I sat down in front of the White House to work for global nuclear weapons abolition and not just a freeze. And I joined in a variety of conferences with, with folks that are very enthusiastic uh, arms control specialists who are always working on, let's not have the F-35, or let's not have the S something or another, you know, whatever the names are. There's always some system that they want to stop, and sometimes they're successful. But there's always a new system being developed. So what we have to do is we have to make sure that there aren't any more nuclear weapons, ever. And how are we going to do that except grab on to what's here now? We have it now. We have it a, a, a tool that we can and I think it's really exciting that we have this tool because we haven't before. And I'm more hopeful than I've been in a really long time. I keep plugging away because I was born to hope. I think that was just mm -hmm. a, a genetic plant in my being, or maybe a spiritual plant in my being. Who knows? So, um, and then the other thing that I wanted to talk about is other campaigns that are working on these issues and that. Um, are worth checking into. I've mentioned nuclearban.us. Uh, Alliance for Nuclear Accountability is a group that's been around uh, for 35, maybe 35 years. And it's, uh, they, every spring they have DC days 
uh, where people can come and join with these wonderful folks who live on the edge of nuclear weapons facilities who have been uh, researching what's going on and lobbying on what's going on and actually making some progress in doing so and educating people in these spring meetings. And I uh, invite you all to go. Uh, it's, it's an amazing experience. On Sunday you get together and they give you a packet of information and explain it all to you and then on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday you go and, and meet with different uh, legislators that you can choose or that they choose if you don't want to. And, uh, and not only are you asked, you are specifically asked to talk about their issues, but you can also bring up at the end what your issue is if you have something specific. For example, I've always been working on Norton's bill and I always just added it on. Now, actually, though, they, they are looking at it more did this year. positively. Yes, ma'am. On your, um, on the Facebook, or on the website, is there a list of senators or congressmen that have already asked or signed on to this? Um, is is anybody from you, California? If, nobody from California, if, California has signed on to Norton's bill yet. No. How about mm -hmm. who, 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 There's is there no, a list or there, how many or, pardon? How many senators or congress people have signed on? Yeah. Over the years? No. There's two right now. Two. There's just two. And we need a lot. Who are they, Adam? Who, who are the two? Who Eleanor Holmes Norton and um, uh, Jim McGovern. Jim McGovern from Worcester, Mass. So also, he introduced another bill. Uh, it's a resolution, HRES 302, <laughs> supporting the UN Treaty on uh, the prohibition of nuclear weapons, that's specifically what it's about. Mm -hmm. it's so, have they not signed on to it because they don't know about it? Or they yeah, they don't, because Norton <coughs> has not been sending out a dear colleague letter, and she says it's much better if people, if they hear from their own constituents that you want them to introduce it. I mean, I can, I've been going with, we've been going with constituents, and as long as there's a constituent there that, that supporting it, then they'll pay attention. If we go on our own, they're not going to listen. So have, have you identified any of the current Democratic candidates that would be uh, sympathetic with this? Well, I'm hoping that Tulsi Gabbard will be. And um, I've written to her, but I, I need to follow up. She's not going to win. And how about Harris or... Well, I beg to differ. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. If people got to know her. Tulsi. <laughs> She's the Hawaiian, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we only can put one dollar and sign up. That helps her have enough numbers so that the discussion at right. least. So she can be on the yeah. base. There's her. no discussion. Only her talks about military and nuclear. None of none yes. others. Yes. So it's best that every one of you, what you can do is that Sign up with one dollar. Even if you're not going to vote for her, even go ahead and send her a dollar so she can talk. So she can if she doesn't win, can, so she she can she doesn't win. Yeah. as long as the discussion comes up, uh -huh. and all of us here are represented being forced to talk about this. Yes. Thank you. Well, yes. We can ask the candidates, all of them, to talk about it. Yeah. Yes, we should ask all of them. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. We ask so the, a few other groups that I'll tell you about that's also on this uh, uh, good people doing great things is uh, Keep Space for Peace is trying to keep weapons out of space and also is trying to close down U.S. military bases around the world. And there are, what, how many military bases around the world? Eight. 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 Yeah, right. Eight. 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 And then Veterans for Peace, of course, you probably know all about Veterans for Peace. And have you heard of the Golden Rule Project? Yes. 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 Yeah. We, we've met them here in Morro Bay, been on their boat. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, well, that's, uh, we'll support it. Yeah. Helen is a member of the world. Yeah. And then there's Back from the Brink. And I'd like to talk a little bit about this one because we'll get, we'll, U.S. Is, is a big organization. Unlike you, where you can make decisions relatively quickly, will U.S. has got to go through a bunch of rigmarole. And some of the people were not in favor of the Back from the Brink program, so we haven't had an official endorsement. But I want to go over what I just recently received from them that I think is very interesting. 
This campaign, <clears throat> organized in the U.S. by Physicians for Social Responsibility, calls on the U.S. to lead a global effort to prevent nuclear war by, one, renouncing the option of using nuclear weapons first, two, ending the sole unchecked authority of any U.S. president to launch a nuclear attack. That's a good idea. Three, taking U.S. nuclear weapons off hair trigger alert. That's an even better idea. Well, no, as good. Four, canceling the plan to replace its entire nuclear arsenal with enhanced weapons. So get rid of the $1.7 trillion bad idea. And five, actively pursuing a verifiable agreement among nuclear armed states to eliminate their nuclear arsenals. It doesn't specifically refer to the, the UN treaty, but it was, that, that's what it would be, it could be. And it goes on to say, uh, on July 6, 2019, CNN published an opinion by Ira Helfen of International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War, who were the people who brought uh, the issue of the humanitarian consequences of a nuclear war, which directly led to the UN Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons after a series of three meetings where these experts were saying what would happen if, say, Pakistan and India decided to shoot bombs at each other. Um, a campaign to focus national attention on nuclear weapons abolition has begun to take shape around the back from the brink platform, a Green New Deal for the nuclear threat, supported by more than 200 professional associations, faith communities, peace and environmental groups. It has been endorsed unanimously by the U.S. Conference of Mayors and by the municipalities of Baltimore, Los Angeles, and D.C., as well as being approved overwhelmingly by the California and Oregon legislatures and the New Jersey General Assembly. And then the last thing I wanted to um, offer is that you educate yourselves and others via social media and uh, since 1999, I have been doing something called Nuke News, N-U-C-N-E-W-S. There's also an N-U-K-E, but I'm N-U-C. On, on Yahoo originally, and, uh, and now on Yahoo and Facebook. And the Facebook, when I'm not traveling like I am right now, every day, people are sending me information or I'm finding it because I'm reading all sorts of stuff, and then I post it onto the Facebook page. So it's a good way for you to keep up with what's going on around the world with respect to nuclear issues. Um, I also do Eye on Congress on Facebook and Yahoo. And that was, that was started many years ago in Wilf by, uh, by a Wilf woman who was living in Washington, D.C. And she would kept um, reporting on what was going on. And she has since died. But I decided that that was a really good idea to do, and so I've, I've picked up on that. And um, Wilf has, has a, face, uh, Wilf US has a Facebook page, which, I mean, a regular Facebook page. Um, but we also have started something called Wilf Smart, a regular Facebook page I and a few other people are able to post to, and you can, you can reply in the comments. But and send messages. But Wilp Smart, W I L P F S M A R T, if you join it, then you can post about stuff yourself. And it doesn't have to be nuclear, it can be anything that has to do with any of the issues that Women's International League for Peace and Freedom is involved with, which include corporations versus democracy and earth democracy, cleaning up the environment, human rights. The number you can see the you can see the um, list of issue committees on the homepage of Wilf US, which is wilfus.org. So, one last thing. I have brought pieces of stationery here, and here is a box of letters that I've collected so far from people on the tour to the Japanese atomic bomb survivors for us to take with us. And so if you would like to write a letter to them, please take a piece of stationery. We got Lots of pens. Write a letter to those people so we can take pens. Thank you so much for having me.